The real estate industry is the world's single largest contributor to climate change. At Fifth Wall, we're on a mission to help the industry eradicate its carbon emissions and build to zero. If you are the CEO of a real estate company, or if you're you know, a board director of a real estate company, what are the concrete action items that you should be doing internally today? And what are the resources you should be mobilizing and franchising today to drive business decision-making? So one is looking at, you know, again, because they have to think about their decisions in the context of what's going to be profitable, right? So looking at the arbitrage between land values such as they are today and the potential appreciation of real estate asset. I don't see enough embrace of that as a kind of straightforward um, nuts and bolts, you know, or, or arithmetical approach to saying, this is where we got to invest more, more resources. Um, and again, create the demand, right? Actually go and create the demand in a way, sort of like in the Steve Jobs sense of you didn't know you wanted an iPhone until I, you know, invented the iPhone, right? You didn't know you wanted to live in a climate oasis zone and get out of overpriced and even ecologically risky, um, you know, coastal areas until I gave you the keys to a place where you're going to be better off, right? The second part of it is make sure that, and again, this is environmental and ethical and a good business case and technologically innovative all at the same time, make sure that you are designing these sustainable habitats. And of course, hats off to you guys at Fifth Wall, because you are the ones who are driving that agenda and putting the money in the right places. Like I talk a lot in the book about mobile real estate as an asset class, you know, and mobile infrastructure. And these are obviously not terminologies that the industry is conventionally used to. And yet you kind of have to be when you start to think about the radical climate change scenarios that we've been kind of ignoring, but are literally upon us right now every minute. So the geography, right, the financial models, you know, using the data. And of course, again, the, the, the physical construction um, of sustainable habitats at a large scale, that's a pretty big agenda. And, and you and I know very well that on Monday morning, or Tuesday morning um, in a typical real estate company's, you know, kind of, uh, you know, meetings or agenda, that stuff doesn't exactly take up, uh, you know, uh, an hour or two of the conversation and strategies. So that that's the movement, right, that we need to see. You know, it, it reminds me a bit of a conversation I have quite a bit with real estate CEOs, which is, you know, when we started Fifth Wall, we went to the real estate industry and we said, look, whether you like it or not, you are being thrust into the world of tech, right? That is just a reality. And the real estate industry reacted in a mixed fashion. The same parallel seems to be happening around climate. And a lot of real estate owners have said, well, I'm in the business of building buildings and I, I, I do real estate. And the, the struggle I've had uh, is, is convincing real estate owners that they're no longer in that. Whether they like it or not, the earth has shifted underneath their feet. Mm -hmm. And the refrain and the real estate business is one where you need to be investing and adopting technology with a very kind of aggressive, futuristic view. Right. And similarly, mm -hmm. you need to have a point of view on climate change and climate mitigation and reducing your carbon footprint. And that again requires you to invest. How does the world convince the real estate industry that is no longer a sufficient answer to say, I just do real estate? What's the one or two sentences that real estate CEOs need to hear? Well, I mean, we know that creative destru destruction, you know, takes care of itself in some ways. And we're seeing that across many industries, basically being caught off guard is not where you want to be. So having your assets, you know, sort of stranded assets, uh, you know, sort of destroyed assets that uh, from, from climate events and not being adequately insured or having had the opportunity to hedge and diversify away from them and not taking them, you know, you're going to be caught on the wrong side of history. The learning curve and the complexity compliance curve and the st strategy curve into bringing in all of these factors varies dramatically uh, across automotive or retail or you know construction, real estate, um, and, and other industries. So I wouldn't say, again, that real estate is necessarily you know, far, far behind others. It really depends on where in the world we are. You invest in and have uh, as investors some of the far-sighted entities from the real estate industry. But, you know, if you wanted to point to a country's model and say, well, you know, look at Europe, it is highly regulated capitalism and regulated at, to the degree that, of course, American capitalism is just not going to be based upon our political economy and system. But there is a lot to be learned from the European example where you still have, you know, the, the demand for and the, and the pressure to innovate. So it's sort of, look, we know where people are going to need to live and the industrial 
industrial realizes, wait a minute, you know, warehousing and distribution and these things have to be aligned to this. And the commercial is saying, hold on, the culture is shifting with the technology and the climate and more remote work. So we need to redesign assets in that way. You know, so at least if we give each at that granular level, each company or, 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 or segment or asset class, you know, a clear set of milestones or, or goalposts, you know, a signpost saying, you know, this is where you, what you know has to happen, start to adjust your strategy accordingly. I think that's the right kind of nudging that uh, needs to take place. Parag, this has been just so interesting. Um, I just wanted to thank you for, you know, for sharing your thoughts and would love to just continue this conversation um, with real estate owners. Oh, we certainly will. Thanks so much, Brendan. It's great to speak with you. Great. Well, thank you so much. 